physics problems. So we're doing kinematics and working on kinematics problems. And so this is a pretty fun one. I think it's pretty fun. You might not like it. And it's about hang time. Okay, so imagine you have someone that jumps and they're in the air for some amount of time. And imagine someone has a hang time of 0.5 seconds. How high do they go? What if they have a hang time of, point of 2 seconds? How high do they go? So let's do this problem. Let's find out how high they go for 0.5 and 2 seconds. And let's just see what happens. Let's just try, right? We can just see what happens. So here's the jumper. Now, I'm going to assume they jump straight up. Okay. So we have really this we can write. So they're going to start right here. They're going to jump up with some initial velocity v0. They're going to go up to a height h. And then they're going to come back down. But the time is for the total time. So remember that when once the person leaves the ground, the acceleration is negative g, where g is 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, so we have that. Let's just go ahead and uh, plug this into our kinematic equation, the one most important kinematic equation, which says this, y, y0 plus v0t minus 1 half gt squared. Now, if I jump up and then back down, my final y is zero. I'm going to assume this is the ground here. My initial y is zero. And, and technically, when we talk about uh, the height, it's how high your center of mass, you can't see, your center of mass moves. It's not how high your feet move, okay? Because you can jump up and pull your feet up and it does weird things, but that's fine. So I'm just assuming the, the person's a point mass. Plus v zero t minus one half g t squared. So let's solve this. Assuming that I know the time, right, 0.5 seconds, 2 seconds, whatever. Let's solve this for the velocity needed to have that time. And there's more than one way to do this. And that's what's great about the kinematics, but I like this way. I like starting with that equation. So I'm going to add this to both sides, and I get V0t equals 1 half gt squared. And then divide both sides by uh, t, and I get this very important thing I'll write over here, v 0 equals one half g t. So that's the velocity that you need in order to have the hang velocity, the hang time that you want. Okay. Now, what about, that's going up and then back down. I want to know how high they were, which is not the same time, right? And so some people might say, oh, it's just half the time. It's half the time to get to the highest point. But no, we're not going to do that. We're going to see if that's true. So let's go starting with that same initial velocity from here to height h. Okay. Now, what is important about that highest point? If I have an object moving up, oh, up, and then back down, it's moving this way, and then it's moving this way. So in between this way and this way, it's this way, right? It's zero. So it has to have a zero velocity at the top. So this is a, let's look at this problem where the final velocity is zero, the initial velocity v zero. So I'm going to just use the same equation. So I'm going to say um, the final, no, I'm not. I'm going to use my, my other kinematic equation, which says V is V0 plus or minus GT. That's one of those kinematic equations that deals with velocity. So let's put in zero for my final velocity, my initial velocity of V0, which is fine. Uh, and I'm going to call this T, T, H, because it's not the same T, right? It's a different T. It's time to get to the highest point. Minus G T H. And let's just solve for that time. So if I add this to both sides, I get G T H equals V zero or T H equals V zero over G. And we should check over here, right? One of the things we can do is to check uh, our units. So this is meters per second squared times seconds gives meters per second. That's meters per second. Over here, I get meters per second divided by meters per second squared. That is seconds. So those are working, right? So that's the time it takes to get to the highest point. Now up here, this is the total time. Let's, this is the total time. So let's solve this for the total time in terms of the initial velocity. And I get uh, T equals... 2 v0 over g. v0 over g, 2 v0 over g. That's half as much. So you spend half the time going up 
and half the time going down, which a lot of people just say, oh, it's, it's half, it's half. But now you can see why it's half. Okay. So now we can just use half of this time, which I'm going to call T, to find the, the height. I'm going to erase this stuff. Okay, let's go back up to this equation right here. I want to find out how high it goes for a particular time. Okay. So I'm going to say the final height y position is h, the initial is 0, plus v0 t, um, but I want t over 2, minus 1 half g t over 2 squared. And I know that value of t. That's important. I know that value of t. And I'm going to go ahead and put in my, my expression for v0 right here, because I don't want, I don't actually want to know the initial velocity. I want to know the height. So I get h equals v0, which is this, 1 half g, that's the total time, t, and then I have to multiply that by t over 2, because that's that right there, so let's put that as t over 2, and then minus 1 half g t over 2 quantity squared. So we get some simplification here, I get a 1 half and a 1 half is 1 fourth g t squared minus 1 half then I square that, and that's going to be uh, two, <laughs> 2 squared is 4, so I actually get 1 eighth g t squared. I can add these two together. I'm going to write this as 2 eighths, right? So 2 eighths minus 1 eighth is 1 eighth. So I get 1 eighth g t squared. That's my height. And it does have the right units, meters for second squared times second squared does give me meters. So I can, if I know the, the hang time of 0.5 seconds, I can calculate that. And if I know the hang time of two seconds, so let's write this, uh, h is the height, 1 8 g t squared. So now let's plug in our values here. So let's say uh, t1 is 0 0.5 seconds, how high would you go? H1 is 1 eighth G times 0 0.5 squared. Calculator, where'd my calculator go? I found it. Okay, so I'm gonna put in uh, 9.8.5 squared, where's the squared button? I really don't like calculators, times 8 divided by. I get 0 0.31, I'll write round it meters. Is that high? I mean, that's, that's normal, right? Here's a meter stick. So I'm going to take that off. I'll do that later. So 0 0.31, that's, that's that high. I mean, that doesn't seem very high, but it's not very long either for the total time. So you're only going up uh, for 0.25 seconds. Uh, so I think that's okay. Okay, now let's do T2. It's two seconds. Well, that's going to be H2 is 1 8 times G times 2 squared. So I, I know 2 squared. I can do that one in my head. That's 4. So it's going to be 4 divided by 8, so it's going to be a half, right? So let's do this as 4 over 8 is a half, so g over 2. See? We don't use a calculator. And I do want to do g over 2, even though I know it is 4.9. But you can do 9.8 enter 2 divided by 4.9. Is that a reasonable number? We're jumping. So maybe we could convert that to feet. I mean, just roughly three feet per meter, roughly. So five times three, that's 15 feet. 15 feet high. Okay, that's not going to happen. So you can't have a hang time of two seconds. It's just not going to happen for humans. Okay. But, you know, hang time of half a second. You could do that. You could probably even do more than that. Try some other numbers. Try, try timing yourself and seeing if based on the time how high you jumped. 
That'd be fun. Right? Okay. Hang time. Kinematics. That was fun.